BC Humanist Association's May 27th, 2020 virtual town hall is Lori Foster from the Kelowna Atheist Skeptics and Humanists Greater Good Committee. Uh, thanks for joining me. Before we begin, I'll recognize that I'm working here on the unceded traditional territories of the uh, Skohomish and Honkamenam speaking peoples. Uh, Lori, I'll turn it over to you to speak a bit about what your committee is, what you've been up to, how you're managing through the pandemic. I might interject with a few questions. Anyone watching either on the call or on Facebook, you can either throw a question in the chat and I'll make sure to bring it up. I'll turn it over to you, Lori. Okay, I was just telling Ian our Greater Good Committee is, is fairly new committee. We got started last fall. Uh, the purpose of the committee is to come up with volunteer ideas for our members so they can get involved in the community. And we were hoping to do some group activities, which we haven't done yet because we were just getting to that point in our, our committee's life when everything got shut down. So we haven't done any of that yet. Um, the first steps of the committee, of course, are all, our inform all the information we need to make the committee work and to... Um, decide what activities we would do. So one thing we did do was put together some forms for our members to apply if they wanted to do committee work and to, um, and then we would have to decide how we were gonna do, um, whether we would approve of that and go ahead with committee work. So some of the ideas that we've had um, were to donate blood in Cash's name and we were thinking of having a day when we would have all of us go and donate blood at the same time, maybe or over a couple days. We weren't able to get that organized yet, so we were just asking people to donate blood in Cash's name. Um, we um, started working with a local organization called SHARE. They have a thrift shop, and they work with special needs people, training them for employment and things, and we had contacted them and we're figuring out again when this started, so we haven't been able to shut down. Um, wait. Um, um, sponsor a refugee, so a refugee who was religiously persecuted for being an atheist. That's a, I think, a very long term project. Although one of our members is so gone, she's done all this research on it and has tons of information. So I think that. It might not be as long-term a project as we think if Jessica has her way because boy, she's really coying at that. Um, so when the pandemic hit, we had just had a meeting and decided what things we were gonna concentrate on. So we didn't do anything for a while, but we do have members who are involved in various things. So at one point we just suggested to our members they could get involved in, other, in certain things in Cash's name. So for example, I volunteer with an organization in Kelowna called Food for Thought, which is in partnership with School District 23, which is the school district in the central Okanagan. And we were feeding children in school and sending food home to children for weekends. And I was working with them and I've continued to work with them through the pandemics. And some of our other members have started working with them during the pandemic. We suggested our members could donate blood still during the pandemic. Um, one thing we did suggest that our, was that our members could share scientifically backed information on the internet because we in, on, on social media because we know what's out there right now. We don't know what to believe and what's right and what isn't. And so it would be good if we know that things are scientifically backed to share them with people and let them know the sources of those things. Um, we also um, just suggested that people buy locally. You know, we were suggesting during the pandemic that if you want food, if you don't feel like cooking, order from a local restaurant, have it delivered or go pick it up just to support local businesses. And we also suggested that um, people help their neighbors, which a lot of people do anyway. But we made that suggestion that people could help out their neighbors if their neighbors were completely housebound or under quarantine. Um, so I'm hoping we'll be able to pick up some of this stuff again soon and get some of these things going. But I guess we just have to go with the flow right now. Maybe a background question. What for you is the importance of this? I mean, your group is a humanist uh, organization. So why is it that you feel the need that there should be a greater good committee and why should there be 
like just generally, you know? What yeah, you- I think, I think part of it is driven by the fact that, um, you often run into people who, when you say you're, you don't believe in God, you don't follow a religion, you're an atheist. They say, where do you get your ethics? And we didn't set up the committee with the sole purpose of going out and saying to people, hey, we're atheists and, you know, look at us, we're good people, we're volunteering too, right? But we just thought we would go and do it. And if then if people found out where we were from, we could say what Kasha is and what we believe and things like that. Um, I think another reason for us in particular in Kelowna here was to have some group activities. We wanted to do some of these activities as a group, get to know people better, spend more time with, with our friends in Kasha. So I think those, and, and to be, um, well, humanist members of society, to help out, to give back to the community and just be, be more a part of the community as Kasha. And could you... Uh, for people who aren't familiar with Kasha, just, you know, how big is the organization? How frequently are you meeting? I know it's quite busy out there. It's the Kelowna Atheist Skeptics and Humanist Association. Um, we were having quite regular meetings. We ha- um, I think we have 30 paid up members, but we have about two or 300 people who get our newsletter and who come out to various events. There's certain events you can only come to as a member, but there's others you don't have to be. We have um, coffee meetings in the mornings a couple times a month. We had skeptics in the pub, again, a couple times a month in different pubs, and we would have trivia or just visit in the pub. We were having a forum once a month in a local restaurant where we would bring in a speaker on a, on a topic of interest to the members, or we would discuss something and a board member would facilitate it if we didn't have a speaker, something that was of interest to our members. Those were the main things we were doing. And then the Greater Good Committee was getting going and a couple of other things were getting started. Uh, for anyone watching, feel free to shoot any questions or let me know, raise your hand, do whatever you do on the internet. Uh, you mentioned, and I think it's one that's come up for us as well, this idea of support, um, encouraging people to share good scientific information what recommendations do you have for people to actually discern that for themselves before they share it? Because I think that first step is the hardest for many. Oh my goodness. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I have certain, I have certain sources I already know about that I trust. So I go to those sources for information. Um, You know, I sat in on a, um, sort of an educational with, and now I'm not going to remember the name of it, but it was something like journalists for social responsibility or something like that. And they talked about how you determine whether something is good information. And one of the things they said was you make sure that you have three sources that you know that are credible sources. And if all three sources are saying the same thing, you can be pretty sure that you're on the right track. But it's been much harder with this pandemic because information is changing by the minute. Um, And so people have to be very, very careful. But I think the thing you have to do is you have to have your trusted sources and you have to check sources you trust and find out if they're all saying the same thing. And then, um, you know, don't just forward something willy nilly. Check it out and make sure that that you're comfortable with it before you do it. Yeah. There are people who have much better answered that question than me, I'm sure. But it is hard. It's very hard. Yeah, there's, if it's in a meme form, it's probably not the best quality information. You want something a little bit more robust. We've been trying to put more robust information out there, find better sources, uh, you know, science-based medicine and these skeptics type groups that do a lot of trying to pull apart the data and pull apart the information are really good. Uh, you know, BCHA has sponsored Viral Transmissions, which is a local produced program that does exactly the same thing. It's tricky, but yeah, I think there is a social um, duty on humanists and skeptics to make sure we're putting out good information and not contributing to the noise. Well, so often if somebody sees something that, and somebody says, I'm a doctor or I'm a nurse and this is what I think, you don't even know if they're a doctor or a nurse, let alone if, if what they're saying is, is 
correct for the situation. And those are the, I think those are the things that people really get caught with is if somebody comes on uh, a YouTube video and says, I'm a doctor and people say, oh, a doctor said this, it must be right. And they don't even know if the person's a doctor, don't know who it is. That's the big one during the pandemic, I think. Uh, I see Brian on Facebook pointing out as much as possible. He says, make sure you read the original source rather than commentary and takes on the source, which is useful as well. One of the challenges there, though, in the current situation is with uh, the speed of science. A lot of stuff is being uh, pre-published in order to get it out there, which is really good for scientists. They can review it and vet it faster than the academic publication system generally takes. But it also means it's not necessarily good science. So it's, it's an information overwhelm kind of situation. And for the average reader, reading scientific journals isn't super accessible or easy. And it's at such a rate, you know, I think there's thousands of papers being released every week or so. And, you know, it's, it's beyond what the people in the field can keep up with. So it's tough. And it's definitely well, I, slow it down. It's a good thing. I think as a lay person, um, I know in the interior here that um, the, the, you know, the health regions have good information and you need to go to those, those sources. And I know I was looking for information on how to keep some of our volunteers safe if they're out volunteering in the community. And I went straight to environmental health. I phoned environmental health and said, what websites should I be looking at to make sure that I know how to keep our members safe? And I use only those sites and that's the only place I go. And I just quote that to people constantly. They're probably getting sick of me, but I say, this is what our health region is saying. So this is what you need to, or, or BCCDC. So this is what you need to be safe. And you need to go directly to sources like that. You're right. So. I want to come back to some of the other uh, points you were talking about, the ideas of donating your time, supporting your neighbors. Mm -hmm. but can you talk, you mentioned... Uh, that you're involved in this Food for Thought program. Can you talk a bit about either that or some of the things you're personally able to do right now? Well, Food for Thought is something that I was involved in prior to even the Greater Good Committee came along. Um, and they are continuing to feed, feed children in the central Okanagan. And so I've been contributing with my skills which was to help them write their information sheets to keep for their members who are packing food to say, this is what you have to do to protect yourself during the pandemic and to make sure that you're not con sending out contaminated food. So I'm constantly on that environmental site I was talking about because I have to constantly check and see if anything has changed, which as I, like I said, it seems almost by the minute. Um, but they've been able, they've kept up their garden project. They are continuing to deliver food, but the difference is of course, there's only five people who are volunteering to pack all the food packages and they can't bring in more than those five people for spacing reasons and also because you want the same five people together every day. And so some people have said, well, I can volunteer to do that. Well, right now they can't because there's a limited number of people that can do it. But there's always something you can do. So some of the CASHA people are helping with the garden project, helping um, build and stain um, gardening beds and um, so there are things that you can do, but you just have to make sure that you're following the rules. So, yeah. And I think the other important thing you mentioned is, you know, around finances. If you're a person who hasn't been hit as hard by this pandemic, like my partner and I are still with stable jobs, it's important to try to be able to uh, donate and support those organizations that are struggling right now and to make sure we can or even if that's you know buying some groceries for your neighbor who might be in isolation yeah i think that's really important the other thing that i that i'm on here in Kelowna is something called um next door north end and it's like an online community association and a lot of people have gone on there and you know you just say if anybody needs anything let me know and you can go and help out um we have um also started it took us about a month to get it going, but we've started the coffee meet meetups with Kasha again. And I think that's really important because some of the people who do this are, are um, have compromised health and they've been extremely isolated. And so being able to go on a Zoom call with, with people that you used to see every two weeks and you haven't seen for a couple of months is really important too. 
because people are extremely isolated. So you just need to, to check up on people and make sure that they're okay and that they've got some contact with another human being. Yeah, our, I, know, oh, mm -hmm. I was going to say our Oak Ridge meetup has largely shifted to Skype calls on a recurring basis. And I think they're watching a video in advance and then discussing it over the call. And we have these meetups and a few other more digital online presentations that I think people are starting to engage with. And, you know, connecting with people is important. You mentioned, I think, in one of your recent news or updates through the cash and newsletter, the BC Caregivers website where people can go and become a pen pal with a senior who might be otherwise isolated. Right. Yeah. They, they actually have a portal where you can go online and send a message. And so I think that's really important. Yeah. Because people, yeah, people in care homes are incredibly isolated. It must be really, really difficult. Um, I was going to say, Ian, that we've done this work now with the Greater Good Committee. We have put together for a form where that our members can use to say, I'd like to organize this activity. This is what the group is. And then we, I mean, I'm sure that they'll all be fine, but we have certain criteria for groups that we will volunteer with. And we have some other forms like that. So we have not yet used the forms, but we're getting, you know, as soon as we can get out of our houses and do more, we will be. So if anybody out there is trying to set up a committee like this, we'd be perfectly willing to share what we've done so far because we've got that and we've got some criteria for how you report back to the Greater Good Committee and to all of CASHA about the events you've been doing and, and that sort of thing. So we'd be more than happy to share that. That's really great. That's good to hear. I hope you're all able to get out soon and do some of that work and in the meantime, I mean, there's a lot people can do from home, sort of digital volunteering as it is, you know, if you have skills as a writer or a proofer or you have uh, web design or artistic talents, there's always organizations needing some additional support on that. Uh, so finding those places to volunteer is really good. Yeah. And some people just haven't got time right now because they're working full time and they have their kids at home too. So it makes it a little harder for people who have done volunteering in the past, but we know we'll get them back. Uh, one additional comment, and then I think we might turn to more general, dis or I might turn to a more general discussion uh, from Facebook. It says, I feel like secular efforts toward charity and community are highly decentralized. Is there an organization or movement trying to serve as a hub for all the others? Is there a centralized set of guidelines to check out is that something on the agenda of the Greater Good Committee? Uh, he's also uh, sort of distracted with the SpaceX launch, which is fair enough. But uh, distracted with what? Sorry. The the SpaceX launch. I think the Elon Musk's SpaceX is launching people into orbit today, which oh. is a pretty big move. <laughs> yeah. Rocket ships. But yeah, there's the secular movement. Largely, it's pretty decentralized. There's a lot of different organizations doing different projects, partially because a lot of the organizations are small. Um, and a lot of the non-religious people out there don't feel the need to do their charitable giving through a non an explicitly non-religious group. Like some people are fine just going to the SPCA and donating their time. And I think that's one of the challenges we face. What are your thoughts on that kind of question, Laurie? Well, I think that I think that one of the reasons we started this committee, and certainly our committee is not going to put together a huge secular thing. We have four members on our committee, but I think one of the reasons we were doing this was to get more publicity for Casha. And as I said, we're not going to go out there and sort of brag up the fact we're here from Casha and you should come and join us. But if people are asking where we're from, I think it'll just get the message out there that there are these groups people can join. We were hoping that it would have that effect in Kelowna here, that we would end up with more CASHA members and more people doing activities for our Greater Good Committee. And, the, and by doing these volunteer activities, we're getting CASHA out into the community as CASHA. And so hopefully that will, well, it will show people that there, there's this organization here that is a secular organization that they can join because there's so few secular organizations for people to join. They don't even, you know, they can't find them because there's so few of us. 
even though there's a lot of secular people. Well, uh, so many people, yeah, so many people are, but they, it never occurs to, it, it doesn't even occur to them to join a secular organization because it doesn't occur to them that there's one out there. And a lot of people are quite interested when I tell them I'm a member of Kasha and what we do at Kasha, they're very interested. So I think if we can, it's another way to get the word out there if we do things as a group. Absolutely. Yeah, and I hope your group keeps going and does well. I mean, there's, you discussed the idea of a sponsoring a refugee and that's something the BCHA in Vancouver took on a couple years ago and brought a couple over and it's a lot and it's not very fast. You have to be patient, you have to have the money and we even worked with a local organization that specializes in it and it's, it's a lot. So definitely reach out to myself or others in the organization and we can talk you through that process. Um, they're, like the government has shut down the refugee program during this crisis as well as part of their closing the borders, which is a real tragedy. I think that's not being discussed enough because people still need, have, people have still fled, you know, persecution. Mm -hmm. And to be a refugee, you need to be not in your home country. We don't, you know, Canada, Canadians can't sponsor someone who's in Iran right now, say, being persecuted. They have to first get out of Iran to somewhere else and then they can apply to come here, which is a very uh, kind of frustrating and not clear to most people. They think, oh, well, you escape the persecution. You just come straight here. But, you know, it's tough. Um, well, one thing we had said is that if we can get the Greater Good Committee out there and get people knowing us, then we can maybe get enough members in Kasha to support a refugee. We're not even sure we have enough members at this point to do it. And so we have to um, continue to build our own organization, but that doesn't mean we have to stop looking into these things. We can still be planning it. And like I said, Jessica is definitely planning it. <laughs> so That's great to hear. I think the biggest thing I've found is a lot of, a lot of change, a lot of effort just takes, you know, that one committed person being willing to step up and do the work, even if it's a lot hopefully they stick around and you find ways to balance that out. So it's not all dependent on them, mm -hmm. but it's tough. Uh, any other thoughts you want to share from Kelowna? We're coming up on the half hour mark with I a few minutes think, left. I don't think so. I think that, um, like I said, if anybody wants to any, you know, wants to talk to us about our committee, that would be great. We will definitely keep you informed when we get busier and get more activities going and we'll let you know what we're up to. Great, and I'll share the link to the uh, Kelowna group on the Facebook chat and wherever else we end up posting this video. Uh, next couple notes are, or the next couple of things for the BCHA coming up on June 5th on the Friday, we'll do another from the research desk talk and I'm gonna be talking about our work on independent schools, private schools, uh, which has been a combination of stuff in the past that evolved from our work on uh, religion in public schools to now looking at these private faith-based schools as well as the funding that goes to just all private schools and the uh, social inequity that that can fuel and we have some new research that I'm still hoping to launch on to release on Monday uh, on that question and then on June 27th will be our annual general meeting that will be conducted online because of social distancing requirements. Um, notice just went to, out to all our members. Get in touch with me if you didn't receive that email. Uh, it should be a good time. We're trying, gonna try and make it as straightforward as possible. It's not ideal to do these kind of meetings online, but this is the world we're in. Uh, otherwise, stay tuned to the emails at bchumanist.ca for what else is coming up. Uh, if anyone on the call has any questions, you can feel free to jump in. Or I'll also just answer one more question on Facebook. All right. Well, Lori, I hope you have a great afternoon and thanks for arranging this with me. And I know we had to shift the schedule around a couple of times, but I'm glad it worked out. Thanks, Ian. All right. Take care, everyone.